So I'm here with uh, John Slesinger, who leads the enterprise architecture practice at Atos Consulting. Uh, John, enterprise architecture is a very mature term now, and, and, and most people do have a view as to, as to what it means, but there is also a confusion as well. Um, from a philosophical standpoint, um, what is the value that an effective enterprise architecture function brings to a business? Yeah, the point of enterprise architecture <clears throat> is that uh, as IT has uh, got cheaper and become more pervasive, uh, it's doing more and more in the enterprise. So an enterprise that started off just doing accounting uh, with the IT, all owned by finance, is now doing you know, <clears throat> all parts of the value chain uh, and uh, lots beside it in information technology. So um, it's like you know, death by Chinese water torture. A little bit got added, a little bit got added, a little bit got added. And uh, what people found is unless you somehow guide those uh, IT projects, the whole is a lot less than some of its parts. Uh, you find you have overlaps, you have gaps, you have things being entered twice, you have things uh, taking too long, requiring too much human intervention and so on. What you need to do is take a, a, a broader view of what the whole looks like and then fit each of the um, uh, projects into that whole. Um, so sometimes people say enterprise architecture is a bit like town planning. <clears throat> But it's like a very funny form of town planning. So um, the, I usually give the example of the Second Avenue subway in New York uh, to describe how enterprise architecture does this, but not the way the traditional town planning does. The Second Avenue subway, they've, they've been planning it since the 1920s. And they got their funding for it in 1928, and that was killed off by the stock market crash of 1929. Oddly enough, they, they got money again for it uh, in 2008. <laughs> so uh, presumably that will be killed off by the 2009 plan. But, but what's interesting is that since 1920 to today, almost every building on 2nd Avenue has been replaced in New York. So an alternative way of doing it would have been to sort of put a tax on building in New York and say every building in New York has to build its bit of the subway. And if you were you know, bad, unlucky enough to be planning a building over where the station would be, maybe we'd give you a bit of help. Uh, but otherwise, you build your bit. Now, to begin with, everyone would, would moan about it and say, this is a tax, why are we doing this? Enterprise architects are stupid. Right. Then after a while, it would just be business as usual. Everybody would say, you know, you know, you know that if you do it there, you have to do that. And you go, yeah, yeah. And then towards the end, everybody's would saying, come on, fin you know, finish it, fill in the gaps, finish this off, because it's going to add value to all our buildings. And uh, that's, that's sort of the way enterprise architecture is supposed to work. It's that kind of town planning. So it's a little bit like a, when, when a big IT project comes along, but it will require a, a massive investment on another piece of, art, uh, of infrastructure that other projects could make, could make use of. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to justify that as part of the first project. Yes, and, and you, I've seen some people uh, try and do it by placing all the costs on the first project act. So, you know, basically saying the first new building in Second Avenue builds the whole subway, and that, that's just... That never works. It's just too hard. You know, the person who owns that project will come along and say, why are you guys stopping me getting my stuff done? So the enterprise architect must never you know, lie in front of the train on the rails because you just get run over. But, when, but, but he has to just nudge the thing slightly. A, 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 become a, a trusted advisory role from someone who can see the whole. It's more than advisory. Architecture should be about execution. It should be about getting things done better. Um, and where does this person sit? Does this person sit typically, or most effectively, should I say, in the ICT organisation? Or is this a business person, a business role? Uh, well, I've only ever seen enterprise architects working for IT. Um, the way I like to see them work is to partner with the people who uh, do change in the business. They could be product managers in marketing or change managers in other functions. Uh, and then when, when there's a change envisaged, and people start to realise, hmm, this change probably has some IT implications, at that point the enterprise architecture team uh, with, with the business person, and then uh, shepherd the, uh, the project through IT. So I I've heard when talking to clients some fairly jaundiced views on enterprise architecture, uh, r ranging from, oh, it's, it's, uh, we, we had enterprise architects in before, and, and all they gave me was um, an extract from the TOGAF, manual and, a, and a, an idea of all the stuff that I had in my IT state, which w went out of date 
uh, as soon as these consultants left. So I felt I'd, I'd wasted my money. I'm assuming that those consultants who'd done that piece of so-called enterprise architecture work had, had missed the point somewhat. Yes, um, I'm, I've got nothing against TOGAF specifically, but I've got something against frameworks in general, which is, you know, to me, frameworks means idiots. Right? Because if you know what you're doing, you don't need the framework. And then if people produce the framework, it's for people to use that don't know what they're doing. So uh, if people who come in using frameworks uh, as, their, as the point of what they're doing uh, are, are not going to do enterprise architecture. They're going to do the framework instead. So as a, as a, as a practical person who tries to, to, to make this real, I'm a, I'm a CIO and I have trouble making decisions on which projects to fund, which projects to cut, which services to cut and which services to invest in. What artefacts would I expect an enterprise architecture team to provide me with as a CIO in order to help me make strategic decisions uh, which also uh, fit, fitted with the, the long-term view but also satisfied what I need to do today to satisfy the business who are hammering down my door? So uh, typically architecture runs with a three-state model. So the enterprise architect should provide the CIO and the business with three states. The current state, which is the way things are now, so somebody asks, you know, well, how do we do that today? This is how we do it. And that, that should have multiple views uh, for each stakeholder and their concerns. So somebody might be interested in security, somebody might be interested in data centers, somebody might be interested in business functions. It's whatever they're interested in, you provide those views of the current state. <clears throat> and then given all the projects that are currently funded, you should have a view of next state. You know, so when uh, these projects uh, that we're currently running complete, it's going to look like this. And that tells you, you know, what's currently happening. Right? And then the third state is future state. Is uh, given the business strategy, the IT strategy, this, this is what we're aiming for. Right? Now the important thing about future state is not that I'm going to have you know, 12 states and then I'm going to be at future state. The important thing about future state is the direction. So as you get to the next state, that then becomes current state. You then look at the business strategy and the IT strategy and construct a new future state which shouldn't be too different from the one you had before, and then look at the business plan and construct the next state. So you're constantly updating from current to next. And well, presumably the, the idea is that next state is high level of predictability, future state lower level of predictability, but gives you the... It's a, the, the, the idea of future and next is to give you a direction uh, what's in, important and what's urgent. And I think more of this, uh, more of this thinking can be, uh, can be found on uh, nextpracticeadvisory.com. John, thank you very much. Yeah.